Uh, welcome back. Uh, that was um, a clips or some clips of what's going on at the National Assembly uh, with the protests going on in Abuja and other states of the Federation. All right, let's go um, straight into it. Um, what's your take on that and how the Labour is approaching this issue? Looking at that clip, Mr. Amadin, I will tell you, <coughs> this is not the expectation, even if you want to go on strike. Yeah. You could see that the turn up, the turnout of the strike yeah. is very poor. Not as you used to know the turnout of labor strike in those days was uh, Adam of Shumole was the president or Omar uh, Joraga was the president of uh, NLC because it still deals with what the impact of the hike in the fuel price. People could not cannot be mobilized from other states from around the FCT to come and join and uh, take an active role in the strike. That is number one. Number two, I think uh, NLC to me, I will mention this: they are not being fair to the government. Mr. President is just barely two months in the system. And if you agree with the removal of the fuel subsidy, what I believe the NLC should first do is look, submit, have your committee on the ground, let them look at issues affecting the nation and labor civil servant holistically, submit your what, your blueprint as a measure, as a way out, palliative measure to the president, you understand now, what, for them to take action. That is it. In the advanced country, that is what is expected of you. As a labor, I just was I expect to go on the street and start demonstrating. No! But they've been talking since they've been talking. Yes, a meeting is quite different. we talking, yes. What I'm saying, labor should have their think tank. Whatever it comes to national issue, you should have your take. This is our take, not where it affects me. They are asking for increment of 200,000 naira for, for, you know, by a minimum wage. This is what I'm saying. You should have direct impact, say, in the government and policy making, decision taking, monitoring and evaluation of uh, government policy and, 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 uh, and building capacity in the government. What are they doing? It's not only what you did in favor in terms of a monetary aspect that you come out to demonstrate. No! Just the moment the, the president have removed the subsidy, what you expect to do? Sit down, have a think tank committee. What I think is going to be the, uh, uh, the effect on what? On the citizens. Then what is going to be the effect? Look at the economic effect, social effect, health effect, everything you look at it holistically, then what are the measures that we are going to propose solution to the problem at the way out to the minister president? You understand now? Mm -hmm. Somebody your blueprint and you tell him you are expecting this to take effect within the next two weeks or the next 30 days. You give him the, you know, the, the fair hearing. Look at what you say. Then if he not calls you for meeting, how do we implement this thing? This is practicable, this is not practicable. It's going to work with not workable. It's not workable within our system or until we have the minister in place. Or we are going to have collaboration with some international partners to establish this. Or you bring your partner that you think they can effectively handle this aspect of the uh, 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 of these issues, then we will not do it together. You see, let me tell you, government is not one man's show. It's not just for those in government. It's not for the executives alone. It's not for the legislators alone. It's not for the judiciary alone. It is for the citizens. That's why I said democracy is for the citizens. And uh, the, uh, it is all it's for the people and by the people and for the people. And the people have to say. And these are institutions that represented the will and the well, the, 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 the mind of the people. This is the institution of the Labour Party have the might of the people. You understand now? They have the strength of the people. They have the population of the, of, of the citizens. And they have even an international organization they are, they, they, are, they are being reflected, ILO. So what we are saying here is that, look, we need to critically look at it. Has MLC actually exhausted all possible means, you understand now, of co in convincing the president of what action to be taken to have a kind of soft landing for every Nigerian so that we will appreciate and look at the removal of subsidy as a, post, as a progress. If it is not there, then... I'm telling you, I'm sorry to say, in the, the NLC, we here, I think we have a long way to go. Strike, strike, demonstration is not the, it's not the measures. But whenever there are issues like this, we expect you to come out with a blueprint, submit, call other institutions on the NLC, tell them, what do you say, how can we resolve this issue? Well, what, what, if I, what if they go through all of this and it doesn't work? Can let, me tell you, let, let me tell you, if it doesn't work, the first issue, what, a communique. Give the people notice. Let every Nigerian see your efforts, intellectually, administratively, you understand, as a collective effort to assist the government in resolving this prob problem. Since the government is being adamant and they are not ready to listen to your own advice, you understand now that you feel is in the interest of the city and the government, then now we can go the other way around to talk in the hard way to the government. 
So they will listen to us. If they say our own measures are not okay, then let them give us their own measures. Let's look at it. And if still we have to, need to give them fair value, we give them time. But look, 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 let me tell you, Amadi. What I expect is that up to now in Nigeria, we are not getting it right. You see, this issue of, uh, of even removing subsi uh, subsidy that we found ourselves today in this position is not making of the Mr. President or the Nigerians. It is the previous government, I will accuse them openly on this aspect, that have brought us to where we are today. You understand now? But Mr. President today has to take that pragmatic action, that proactive action to say, look, we have removed whatever the quality let the this one and for all, and we'll bear, we'll, we'll, we'll bear it, and later we'll come to appreciate it. Let me tell you, we are talking of those in the, oils, in the, in the oil and gas sector that are making trillions of naira from this fuel subsidy before. It has been removed. These people will definitely find a means of fighting back for stretching the effort of the government because they know that this is their way of life, this is where they eat, this is where they drink, this is where they get what the result of the government, this is where they hold onto the government. In this Mr. President's speech, he said it. He said few people have tried to frustrate the effort of the entire nation, but administratively. So now we should be patient enough so that these people could be head on head on collision. And I'm serious about it. In the in the previous government said, Mohammed said, the President Mohammed will said, look, when you are fighting correction, correction try to fight back. Those that you are fighting will also have their own mechanism to put in place to frustrate your effort and even other effort that will have direct impact on the citizen. So what we are saying here is that look, first and foremost, what will bring the surplus uh availability of fuel in the country that will bring down the price of the fuel is what is when you have multiple and uh, more you open ways that other people can come in and invest into it both local and foreigners let me tell you i'm very surprised and if i have the opportunity i will tell you i never expect that but it will play to the gallery in Nigerian politics to deceive the citizens of Nigeria. At the 11th hour of the previous administration, they commissioned the, uh, his uh, refinery, and it's one of the largest and what the most modern refinery we have in West Africa, if not Africa. Then after what the commissioning, we thought this guy will go into what, full production and refinery, refinery of the product. Then we now, after some months, we heard that they have been given a license to import fuel. What an irony. So now, this self-contradiction in business. Not even in politics, it means in business. Then what are all the measures? And I'm sorry to say, I came back to learn and understand that it was the CBN, the uh, uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, that facilitated the loan that he used in building the refinery. In the interest of who? Nigeria. So why is the refinery not working after commissioning? Then the same person now was given a license to import fuel. If this is the case, my brother, give license to uh, Isaac Karabiu and Sons. Give license to Adeni Bajilio and Sons. Give uh, license to uh, MTN and others. Let everybody bring their product inside the country. Whoever want to patronize will patronize it based on what on the price. Look for foreign partners that are ready to import. Give them the license. Make it even Ali Al Maji that have the, 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 the means. Give Ali Al Maji anybody. Give him license. If you will, oh, good they will give you. You just want to use it like CAC, uh, in the CSE. You have your company. Then they will offer it to you. If you can you give us? Oh, go and bring it. Will anybody stop you from bringing bees from uh, Kano State to Abuja? And that, that's what you are saying. So go to anywhere in the world, bring the product. If you are ready to buy, buy it from you. As far as it will confirm it is good, it's okay for, the, for, for our consumption here in Nigeria. This is one aspect of it. Make the product surplus. And number two, still in the oil and gas industry, we have what we call modular refinery. Government, in, in, with immediate effect, can establish nothing less than 50 to 100 modular refineries, state them in various states where you have your wells, or, uh, uh, crude oil and start refinery, refining direct to the people. You understand now? And know what is happening there. That is number two. You usually know what, what this guy is saying is because he's on the system. What is it in the system? We have a refinery built on what? On ship. 
if you have 500 billion naira, why can't you use 40, uh, 50 percent to 60 percent of it? Buy these refineries, bring them, you understand now, as a, as a short term measure to have a refined product by the government itself and have them on the street for the for the local, uh, for your own city to buy within your own price and measures. Yes, on that thing, let me tell you finally, Mr. Madi, look, if Dangote as a long measures can build a refinery within the short period of times, you understand now, and this is an individual, is Dangote today richer than Nigeria? The answer is capital no. I am assuring you, the government will look at it. Dangote has spent, for example, $500 million in building the refinery. Look, tell the CBN, I need $500 million. Look for a consortium. This is what, what we are pegging down for now. Do such a capacity refinery for us, making two of that, I mean, the, the same with the, 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 the with this amount. If there is anything left, after building it, they will now come to what? To sell capital shares and, and what? And privatize it. All right. Um, let, let's move over to the issue of the ministerial list. We'll just quickly take a report now of some Nigerians reacting to President Tinubu's speech and also um the list and you know what to expect when we return i'd like to respond to you know what nigerians are saying we'll be right back there has been mixed reactions to the ministerial list released by the president bola ahmed tinubu's administration some nigerians are of the opinion that a ministerial list need no suspense as there was nothing new to look forward to while emphasizing that the government of Bola Tinubu has failed to fulfill the promise of inclusivity in governance. Yes, uh, I think uh, what the Mr. President has done was actually to beat the 60 days deadline in consonance with section 42 of the constitution. And uh, to a large extent he has presented those that you think they should be able to work together with him. But uh, when you look at it, he didn't attach their portfolio which has left uh, an average Nigerian into doubt and as much as possible suspicion that in what capacity will some of them will be serving. We have seen uh, a number of them who, have, uh, who are more of politicians than technocrats. We want to believe that they should know their onions and give to us uh, what we think should be an advancement to what is obtainable currently in Nigeria as far as governance is concerned. When I saw the list, I, I actually felt uh, very, very disappointed. Uh, knowing fully well that um, it's a list that does not deserve our sus does not deserve keeping us at suspense for the for that long uh, recycling of same set of people majority on that list they are same set of people same characters some of them deficient in characters that we have known for many years and uh, I would say it it is seen as a disappointment from the progressives. And because uh, when you look at it, we have actually thought that we are going to work on a different route. But it appears that it's not different from what we have been seeing in the past. Where you see governors retiring to be uh, ministers and seeing some senators retiring to be this. And the inclusivity is not actually seen to have been affected as promised by uh, President Bola Ahmed. Uh, the newly appointed ministers have also been urged to be proactive and support the government so as to record more successes. Mm, having released the list, I would say it's a good development. But what is most important is the competence of those who are being listed out. Because being a minister does not mean you should not be proactive, you should not be up and doing. How do you support this government in ensuring that uh, it's called success or successes. So it's a good development. Then at the same time, if you look at the, um, the choice so made by the president, they are all competent hands with their background. But they should equally ensure that they contribute their quota positively to the development growth of the country. Analysts have said the presentation of women in President Bola Tinubu's list is 25%, which is 10 percentage points short of his promised 35%. From Abi Okuta, Jumoke Adebari, reporting for Kaftan Television News. Welcome back. Those were Nigerians reacting to the ministerial list and um, the incomplete nature of it, so to speak. I'd like to get your thoughts on that. Uh, President Tinubu only barely 
met the deadline uh, just a day or on the day with 28 men instead of um, the required uh, mandatory about 36 or so I supposed to have what do you make of that uh, <coughs> you see there is one thing that normally comes with this uh, ministerial list when we have new government in place or after every four years of election electionary process in Nigeria the ministerial list used to come with a lot of voodoo, I would say it. What do you call it? Voodoo. Okay. Why I said it is that, look, you see a lot of interest. You see a lot of political calculation. You see a lot of ethnicity interest. You see a lot of state interest. You see a lot of stakeholders to interest. You see party and anti-party interest in it. So with this, and it cycles, all the cycles goes around one man, one man and a single entity, that is Mr. President. For him, and you find it difficult sometimes to make a decision on how to go about it. If you are not extremely careful as a leader, you understand now, at that particular moment, you lose, you lose everything in co as control, as head of this, as the president. You see, if we have a ministerial list that every state should submit an, a candidate for a ministerial slot. And the six your political zone will also be considered one one for a ministerial slot, including FCT. Now, everybody wants to show his the effort and his ability, capability, why this person should be nominated. Why this candidate and not this candidate? The preferential arrangement and agreement and disagreement on individual classes, education will come to play. And if everybody is qualified, and if it is from the same state, from the same region, from the same political affiliation, then how do you go about it? And everybody is claiming to be the right person to be there. You see, these are issues that. I'm sorry to say, even you, if it has been placed before you, you need to have a, a lot of sleepless nights. Not one, not two. And a serious headache before you come to a term, an agreement of, look, I am done with this list. It's not an easy task. An easy task. So let's not take it to be a child play. And I am very sure Mr. President is not going to handle it with what? A child, you know, a... Uh, you know, a child play. No. Because you are talking of this is the organ, one of the sensitive organ of the government, particularly the executive. But when you say he's not going to handle it, you know, like child's play, how do you think the Senate is handling it? We've seen a lot of these nominees come up and there's so much hurry to tell them, take a bow. We even saw some um, senators from the regions of the minister saying, yeah. vouching for him, you know, where we expect to see some level of grilling to get down to who these people are what they've done we see some people who are supposed to that saying that this man is from my state uh, we like him we're happy with him he should take a bow and go do you think the senate is doing justice to screening these people to get us the very best uh let me tell you i would have loved to look at the combination some nigerians have actually reacted seeing old faces fall before i go to your question I'm not trying to run away from your question, so I will link it together, you know, uh, logically. Like you have about four or five governors that are in the ministerial list. Some former ministers still reflected and governors are still in the list. Let me tell you that, look, I will make and uh, draw a logic from one of the speeches of late Metama Sule. He said, for you to have a perfect administration you need the youth the vibrancy of the youth the dynamism of the youth of the youth you also need the experience and the resilient of the old administrators so when you bring them together they blend together where the youth will learn from what the experience of what of these old men then you have a perfect blend of what you want we have some uh, 36 years uh, and the media for there. We have never seen, seen such an uh, youth representing, being represented in 
ministerial cabinet since I could say uh, during the time of uh, what we call it, uh, maybe the Fourth Republic. It, as far as this 21st century, we are seeing for the first time. And you look at, and, and is this uh, ministerial list, we have about seven, uh, six or six uh, women. Gender sensitive. The, the sensitivity of the of Mr. President on gender affiliation when it comes to the ministerial nominee, we should also appre you know, appre appreciate it. That look, this is what is trending in the, in, in the international uh, relation and international politics. And within the community of nation, this is look we need to blend these three things together the old people in the experience have he gotten the old experience that ha really knows and master the game when it comes to this aspect of administration number one number two he brought in the youth number three he has brought in the women this three class of people if you have gotten a try triangularly in a triangle form then i'm very sure by the time they sit down they blend together they are going to work effectively i'm going back to your question my brother so we should not just say look because we are seeing a uh, rufai we are seeing wiki we are seeing a uh, badaru they are governing their foreign ministers yes they have come with a lot of bag of experience and that will actually help the youth the newcomers coming in there so i believe that what we, where, where we are going after the first four years if there is every good opportunity on mr to go for the second term these guys will be dropped that these guys have learned and apprentice they have come with age of experience also that look we are okay we can go we are good to go and bring in more youth to take from from them so let's go back to a question the screening of the nominees at the national assembly you see there is the screening is quite different from whereby confirmation is different when they are doing the confirmation the, the nominees will not be there this screening the screening is that look tell us who you are tell us about your cv most of the senators have your cv before them i'm so so person this is my educational background this is what i this is what i've done before i've done before is there something that they, have, they didn't know about you bring it out you understand now so this is the excess essence of the screening the screening is not, not to table any issue against you no we want to know your data personality data your profile who are you what have you achieved what makes you to qualify as a nominee in the first place are you genuinely by every legal standard by every constitutional right are you right to be nominated to be nominated as a nominee for military appointment in this country if that is if that is the case good and fine you understand now so then the initial the, the, the assembly will now look at it holistically okay yes now if they have known you before you have been a minister before they have screened you they know what you have done before there is no any legal ag issue against you you have never been sent to prison for any uh, any reason you have not been accused for by any uh, uh, nigerian institution for one reason or the other so why not you, you don't need to waste time they have a lot of uh, issues to, to handle before them so they will not tell you go but there is what we call that is screening you understand now the when it come to confirmation proper then they have their report before them this guy says he goes to this school confirm because as the odcv before them have gone through a lot of screening by the dss by a lot of security agencies and these are series that is before them so the moment you miscalculate my brother let me tell you they have and they will just cross it they will dot the i cross the t all right let me quickly get your thoughts on the names that you have seen do you have any thoughts on the names maybe anyone that stood out to you people you feel well let me tell you good addition this i'm not so sure do you have any thoughts on the the quality of the list L i would mention like uh two or three individual i've seen there looking at the person the pedigree and the administrative quality of erofi you know it's a guy is a person and a personality in Nigeria that is well respected today in the international scene that look if you give thoroughly him with the responsibility of any ministerial appointment he is going to perform excellently and let me tell you if I was this uh, question yes when I saw it by uh, the former governor of uh, Vemfora State uh, Abiyazi Viari and he, he asked him three questions and the three questions before he put it to him let me tell you there is an in-depth in-depth calculation of an, an, an academician there in that question it 
took uh, Abdullahi Diari more than 10 minutes for him to give play that question before uh, before Erufai. And Erufai tactically and he answered that question within less than five minutes. Excellently handling the whole question within that time framework. And that shows you the guy knows where to peg what? Every uh, peg in the hole directly. And he knows that, look, I know my own will as far as the Power sector is concerned. If you give me, I'm not going to make any. I'm not going to commit any error. And that tells you that look, this will actually knows them, do this themselves. Now, start now. Even if you look at a Pabio, the senior president, and other senators that are not even from the north, you understand now. Applaud the achievement and the personality of Erufai. That is it. So, let me tell you. I think when it comes to Wiki, the same thing happened. We have seen him performing when he was then the minister of what of education. And when what he has done in what in, uh, in River State. So for but, me, but the, the uh, I just like to um, consider the, the quality of his response. Do you think it indicates that he could be successful if given the role? I say this because people say that um, uh, former governor of Lagos State, um, Fashola. Fashola, you know, was also very eloquent during the screening. He also gave the solutions to the power problem and others, and uh, people say. After he became the minister, we didn't quite see that level or the expected level of performance. Uh, do you think uh, it's the same this time around, or do you think um, Governor Erufa is drawing on other things that will make him more likely to succeed? You see, let me tell you, there is what we call individual differences. The individual realistic differences between uh, Fashola and Erufa is quite open to criticism, practical criticism progressive pro uh, criticism, positive criticism between these two individuals. Uh, Fashola was the immediate governor that took over the saddle of, uh, of uh, leadership when Bolatidibu left Lagos. You understand now? He built on what? On the foundation already, and he leveraged on the foundation already built by Bola Ahmed Bolatidibu. And he always consult and contact Tinubu for consultation, understand now, administratively in Lagos State, that is number one. When all these things was night together and look at it as a quality for Fashola to have taken the right decision when it comes to what this power sector as the Minister of Power, then he failed. For what reason? He is not a proactive minister. He believed in the normal process of what legal process whereby you read. And look at it if it is right it is right it's not right it is right it is not right this is what he has been he don't throw out his channel as a minister he look at all the files in the middle of the legal uh, demand right or wrong you understand now left and right if they're in okay legally he look at it from that profession but he never knew that look come to time that look we need to look at it how effective is it when it comes to the ordinary masses, you have to look at it beyond the legal practitioner, the, beyond the legal setting of the paper document. That is why I said, look, this will not have been provided, we have been provided the, uh, the power sector to them until after 10 years, you cannot do anything. If they are not performing, you understand now, and the government is still pumping money into it, then what do you do? Is there any clause on this that after selling the product to you, that I have to come and start paying for the laundry of your, of your, of your suit and tie? And the irony? It's never done anywhere in the world. It's not part of the contract. So now, let me tell you, look, looking at to the response of Mala Nathur Erofai yesterday, it tinkles my heart. And the guy did something clear, very clever. And he said, when he was given the breakdown of his academic record, he said he went on academic exile, even though he didn't put academic. He said, I went on exile. For what? To study more! In outside the country for four years, so that guy knows what he's doing. When he came back and came back into the system again, he made his way as a governor, and now he's coming back what as a minister. And if one of the uh, problem we have today that have serious impact on our existence as human beings in this country is what is the power sector. And I would like Mr. President to give that power sector to Erufai because he said it. Look, he said in that interview. Erufai said, we will not accept any flat billing. Every house member, every house must be metered. And we will not take any short, any uh, court 
those that will not like to pay their bills any form of war sabotaging by not paying we are not going to take it uh, easy with anybody look since from the beginning he has not been given that what he's telling you look i'm going to be on my toes whoever right. bridges the rules of the game will face the consequence all right that's, and that's that, five for you that's interesting hopefully you see that implemented what about other names are there other names yes i it? see i i like uh, this uh, i saw both of these uh, ladies you see them appearing for the senate for the first time even though they don't have the experience as i said they like the experience how to you look at it what we call anxiety in public speaking when they feel the you know senators here you have you have professors you have governors past ministers you understand now then they are facing such a crowd maybe and uh personality at national level for the first time you see them being timid being the anxiety you understand uh, emotional in all those have serious effect on their presentation but as i said that is not the yastic what we want to look from them what we are looking at look do they have the capacity academically do they have the experience from what they have in their cv to handle to be a, a nominated as a minister of federal republic of nigeria do they have the physical health strength have, can they but i'm fine this will not bring me to answer your question you see even we are tell, going to tell somebody to take a bow, draw his attention, unconsciously make him to stand for at least total of 30 minutes to test what? His moral ability standard. Test his physical strength. Test what? His eloquence in speaking. Test his words. His, when it comes to reasoning, there's also it's called, uh, the, his uh, ability to think fast and answer to questions to be uh, able to build stop and provide solution to problems you see, use that period to bring it not even direct the have to have to do with nation you understand take him say, look, you are, a, you are a, a lawyer then in cases like this how do you treat it take him out of after the uh, nominated uh, you know the ministerial appointment you are going to give him bring him to his field but do you think this was done actually it was well not done enough. it not done enough because you must test them the ability sometimes you even attack their performance to see how emotional they will act <laughs> because all of these things are going to be counted because you are screening them this is not time for you to say look we are confirmed on a meeting of standard you are screening them in the screen there are things that are caught that let the, the person the nominees should not be uh, should be unconscious of it but you as a senator you are conscious of what you are doing you want to see how emotional balancing is and how will you respond? Because these people are going to represent you in the international system whereby you have intellectuals above average worldwide where people are presenting the best of their citizens and they are going to represent you. Then how will they, how can they fit into these organizations? How will they represent you as a nation? And you say you are the general of Africa. They are expecting you to have first class people represent you at that forum. forum. So now what I'm telling you is that the national assembly apart from knowing them personally you understand now you must put them to test that they are not conscious of what you are finding in them even though you are going to pass them even though you are going to pass them but look at them from the other side of it you understand now i think look psychologically this guy is this philosophically you can put philosophical thought to them look uh looking at this statement from social leader what, what is your thought take on it if you are a, a leader, because I want to represent us. It's, all these are intellectual ability to test. Some people have been out of reality on what is happening in the 21st century, and you are bringing him back as a Missouri nominee. Test their ability. Look at what they are saying. How will they respond to some questions? What are their takes on international issues? Look, big issue. The, uh, what, ask them question about the uh, Ukraine, the Russian Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukrainian war. All right. I'm um, so sorry. We've run out of time now, but it's been a pleasure talking to you, Dr. Suleiman. Uh, it's been great hearing your thoughts and analysis on the issues and the state of the nation. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you very much. It's a, ple it's a pleasure being with you again. Thank you. All right, that's all we'll take on this segment of the program. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be taking a look at um, Nigeria's um, influence or what it should be as regards the Niger crisis and um, the ECOWAS intervention. Stay with us. We'll be back soon.